All right, so we're, we're starting with our, our first week in our New Testament in 24. We're going to take 50 weeks and read through the entire New Testament. We're going to have some... I thought we did it without. Okay, go. Because that's was better sound. Yep. So uh, we're, we're working through some technical issues and so forth today. We'll see how those uh, improve and progress over time. Uh, but it's about 12, 13, so we're going to get started um, We'll talk more about this as the weeks go on. As you come in, if you want to get some of the study materials, uh, give us your email address and we'll send those out to you. Uh, but let's let's start this out with just a little word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this time that we can get together and, and, and read through your word and study what you've got to, uh, to relate to us through that. Uh, be with us as we embark on this adventure to, to read uh, the entire New Testament this year. Uh, just give us uh, uh, the thoughts that you would have us to, to express and uh, help us keep our minds open to what you would have us receive. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So we have, if you will, we're going to be in Matthew 1 through 5 today, here January 4th. Uh, just a little background about Matthew. All of the four uh, Gospels um, tell a lot of the same story. But Matthew is Matthew is a Jew. He was telling his story uh to the Jews, and it was about a Jew. His biggest uh, thing that he wanted to get across was that Jesus is the King of the Jews and the long-awaited Messiah. The other uh, three Gospels have a little bit different um, message they're trying to, or, or framework they're coming from, but Matthew's is more about expressing Jesus as the King of the Jews. So if you flip. So there are five major discourses in the book of Matthew. Today we're just going to get to the beginning of the first one, which is the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount goes from chapter 5 through the end of chapter 7. We're just going to get started with that today. Uh, the second discourse is the, the commissioning of the apostles in chapter 10. Uh, the parables about the kingdom in chapter 13. Uh, the childlikeness of the believer over in chapter 18. And lastly, uh, his second coming in chapters 24 and 25. There's a lot more information in there, obviously, but that's kind of how you can break the book of Matthew down. So I want to talk first about a little timeline. So this is something that we'll email to you, and this is, um, I need to show you where to find that. Okay. It is in the PDF, it's in the Adobe. Can you pop that up? Oh. So this is a, a, something that I stumbled across, oh, about six months ago. There we go. So this basically uh, is a really interesting um, layout of the chronology of the four Gospels. And right now we're just looking at Matthew, but it, it lists the, the actual the things that happened and when they when they appear or if they appear in each of the Gospels. So right now we're going to be going all the way through and looking at Matthew all the way down through. If you'll scroll down a little bit. Till we get to the end of chapter 5 in Matthew. I don't know how to scroll without the mouse. Well, it's clicked on something. Okay. So we'll, we'll get all the way through Jesus traveling through Galilee here in, in Matthew. Actually, go, go a little bit further. Because I think we see, uh, yeah, we see that going through chapter 5, we get a little bit lower. Some of Matthew isn't always um, in chronological order. Matthew does jump around a little bit. Um, uh, we, but we see the parallel in the other Gospels as well. Anyway, this is a really neat study tool, uh, just looking at what happens based on whichever Gospel that you happen to be in. We'll jump back. We're going to talk a little bit about, uh, I find it interesting to, to look at the timeline of, of what happens, but also of where these things happen, and we'll, 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 we'll come to that uh, as we go through these, uh, this presentation. Uh, another thing that we're going to send to you in email is something that I'm kind of going through here, and it's something that you can look at as a study outline. So if you'll go back to, I just want to kind of look at that just briefly. Go back to uh, no, go to the open uh, browser. I'll tell you which one. Just hover over. Go a little bit further. Go to, um, nope, Full New Testament summary. 
So what we'll be doing in each, each section is we'll look at uh, an outline um, uh, of, of the chapters that we go through. So today we're doing the first five chapters. The first two um, chapters is kind of grouped together. Uh, we look at the, the, the record of the Messiah, which we'll talk about uh, the revelation concerning the Messiah and the request to see the Messiah and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, it's just a really nice outline to, to go back and, and review as you're looking and go back and reading through these chapters uh, after we finish today's scripture reading. And we'll talk more about that, what I want you to do when we get finished. So again, that's just a couple of things that we're going to send out uh, if you sign up to uh, we're not going to bombard your email, uh, but if you, you want to receive the study information, you can bring, uh, you can follow that on as, in, in your own study. Next slide. So we'll, we'll jump right into it, and we're going to keep these up here. As we go, I'm going to look at some maps and so forth that kind of explain where things are. So we'll just start in chapter one. Um, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Amminadab, and Amminadab begot Nashon. And Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam, Rehoboam begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, and Jehosh Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham, Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh, and Manasseh begot Amon, and Amon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Sheltiel, and Sheltiel begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Ab Abiad, and Abiad begot Eliakim. Eliakim begot Azor, Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim, and Achim begot Eliud. Eliud begot Eliezer, Eliezer begot Mathen, and Mathen begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. Now, the interesting part is we just went through Christmas, so a lot of this first couple of chapters is just kind of review, but we'll go through it. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph... Son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So we don't get the whole story here in Matthew. We get more of it in, in the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. But the distance, so the, the story tells us that uh, there's, a, there's a taxation going on, and everybody has to go back to their hometown. So... Uh, Joseph and Mary uh, are in Nazareth before Jesus is born. They have to travel this 70 miles down to Bethlehem, which is circled right there. And so that's pretty rough terrain. On average, we walk about three normal people, normal ground walk about three miles an hour over rough terrain, backpack goods, maybe one mile an hour. So they had 70 hours worth of walking with Mary being hmm, eight and a half months pregnant. 
Now, we don't know if she was on a donkey, on a, on a camel. We just don't know. But either way, that was a, a long distance to go. So they now headed down to Bethlehem. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when they had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So, the sixth, I believe, is called what? January 6th, tree down day. Anyway, so the, 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 the idea, the tradition is that these wise men saw the star, which in our mind is epiphany. the epiphany. They, they call that celebrated on the 6th of January. Well, traditionally, the Orient is considered to be in this general area in Iran. And from Iran to Jerusalem is a thousand miles. Now, it's actually even further, depending on where they came from. Uh, a thousand miles, that's a thousand hours of walking. And to get there from in 10 days, I think this happened quite a bit later than six days after the birth of Jesus. I think this was maybe even closer to a year of age. Uh, possibly when, when the, 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 the three wise men actually got there. So that's the distance that they had to travel. Um, back to verse 5. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it had come and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he rose... When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I shall call my son. So here we are. Jesus has just been born in Bethlehem. Not in here, but in Luke, we see that he goes back up to Jerusalem uh, to be... Um, I'm going to say sanctified. That's not the right word. Uh, but he has to go to Jerusalem. He's uh, circumcised at the same time. From there, then the angel tells Joseph, Hey, Herod's out for you. you got to take off. Well, from, from Jerusalem all the way down to where they would go into Egypt is another 250 miles. And so we jump in a car and think 250 miles is, you know, we just get going. But again, that's a minimum 250 hours worth of walking uh, to get down there. Okay, and then verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time uh, which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled the prophet by Jeremiah the prophet, fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. Ah. 
But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So here we see it was 250 miles to get to Egypt. The angel tells Joseph, hey, everything is good. Herod is dead. They start the, the, the 285-mile walk back. They could have stopped further down around Bethlehem, but one, Joseph was afraid of uh, Herod's kid and that he might be uh, as the same way as Herod was, which was uh, willing to kill young kids to protect his reign. So he went all the way back up to Nazareth uh, to fulfill the, the prophecy, which was, again, another 285 miles all the way back. All right. And so getting into chapter 3, now we move from Jesus. Uh, we introduce John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, John himself, the clothes and hamel, camels. Oh, okay, so here we are. So right now, John is doing all of his stuff just a little bit north of the Dead Sea or the Salt Sea. Uh, this is actually where Jesus will be baptized. We see this arrow coming out this direction. That's where Jesus is going to spend his 40 days and undergo his temptation before, before he departs to go back up uh, to Nazareth and to Galilee. But that's kind of where we are um, and some of the uh, gospels you hear it referred to as Bethany beyond Jordan, and that's that's where Jesus, uh, where where John did a lot of his baptizing, and that's where Jesus was baptized. Okay, verse four. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized him by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, Well, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by, uh, by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you're coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we go from here to chapter 4, which gives, gets us to uh, the, the temptation in the wilderness. And in verse 1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered to him. 
Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region in the shadow of death, light has dawned. So Jesus was baptized way down here, made his way all the way to Nazareth, which sits, well, right around here. Then they have to travel up. Capernaum sits right here. And a lot of stuff happens at Capernaum. Capernaum is one of the areas that Jesus spent most of his time. Um, we'll get to it in a moment. He's going to travel just a little bit higher up here uh, where he gives a Sermon on the Mount. All right, verse 15. 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets, and they followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. And then we get to chapter 5, which starts the Sermon on the Mount. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Now, obviously, I've never been there, but apparently where, where he gave this sermon, you could actually look down onto the Sea of Galilee, and apparently it's pretty amazing. So the Beatitudes, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, well, 11 and 12 um, verses constitute about three months worth of teaching that a person could go through right there. We're not going to go through that since we're primarily just reading through the scripture, but there's a lot in there. Maybe we can get back to it sometime. Verse 11. Uh, well, let's go to 10 again. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this is just a continuation. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. Put on a lampstand, lampstand, and it shall give light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Do not fulfill, do, do not think I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now we're going to get into uh, some look back at the Old Testament for the rest of chapter 5. Uh, Jesus interpreting that. Uh, verse 21, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder. 
and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that who, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, brother, Raka, shall be in danger of, of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and then and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you're out, while you're on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Verse 27. You have heard it that it was said of, of, of those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And each one of these things we could take a full hour talking about. Marriage is sacred and binding. Furthermore, it has been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. Verse 33, again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is, is his footstool, nor by the earth, for it is his, foot, his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Uh, verse 38, the second mile. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise in the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So that's Matthew 1 through 5. And again, that is that is a lot of material. Uh, so next week we're going to go through Matthew 6 through 10. Uh, next week we're going to take, if anybody wants to volunteer to, to read a chapter, they're more than willing, and I'd be glad to have that happen. Uh, just just reading the Bible, reading God's Word, uh, whether or not we spend an hour on each each verse would be nice, but uh, even even reading it is 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 a as a step towards uh, to God and and His purpose. Uh, the next slide, if you will. So some things we looked at the study summary that we looked at a little bit uh, of this presentation, these slides and so forth in that gospel timeline. Uh, Y'all have signed up. If you don't know it, you've signed up for. Uh, to receive those things and each week uh, we'll we'll update those we'll probably put them on our website so that you can go back later and just look at them all there um, so next slide my until next week I'm going to recommend use that outline presentation and that gospel top timeline reread the chapters from this week and look and see spend a little bit more time in it each day uh, five chapters one chapter a day is, is probably a good uh, thing to look at uh, and lastly Go to church. That's a big one. All right. We have two minutes for discussion. And two minutes is not much time for any discussion. Yeah, there's so much right there. So we'll close with prayer. 
Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this time to, to, to read your word and to, to share the meaning and just spend time in, in, in your, your presence. Uh, help us to apply this. Help us to make uh, daily scripture reading and prayer with you part of our, our daily function. Uh, be with us. We go through the remainder of this day and help us to be a light for you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <coughs> That's it.